Good day, this is Mr. Beard. Um, I've put together uh, a couple videos uh, to support uh, the basic math techniques. Uh, um, you see here I'm calling these practice problems for basic math techniques. These practice problems are from the, your text, the basic laboratory method for biotechnology, second edition by Seidman and Moore from chapter 13. And the first problems, the example problems we're going to look at um, are proportions. So on page 232 we have this problem. If there are about 100 paramecia in a 20 milliliter water sample, then about how many paramecia would be found in 10 to the third mil of this water? And we're going to look at a couple ways to, or strategies to solve this problem. First of all, let's look at the 10 to the third milliliters, right? You know, 10 to the 3 milliliters, how many is that? Remember, when we talked about exponents, 10 to the 3 is equivalent to 10 times 10 times 10, which is equal to 1,000. So that's the question is, if, if there are 120 mils, about how many are going to be in 1,000 milliliters? So strategy one is the proportional method where we can say 100 paramecia right, in 20 mils is proportional to how many paramecia in 1,000 milliliters. So we have this proportional set up. Remember to solve it, we can cross multiply, right? So we can say 100 paramecia times 1,000 ml is equal to 20 ml times how many paramecia? Okay. So, let's go down and rewrite this to solve for the question mark. We're going to divide both sides by 20 ml, so we're going to rewrite this. Right, to find our question. Now, since these units cancel out, we can do our multiplication and say 100 times 1,000, right, which is going to give us 100,000 paramecia divided by 20, right, is going to equal 5,000 paramecia. Okay, that was strategy one, right? Strategy two is just going to look at it as saying how many, first, how many in one ml, and then basically multiply it by the 500. So, if we have 100 paramecia in 20 ml, right? So, if we just divide by 20, right? Then we get, what, 5 paramecia. per mil. I'll put one for one ml divided by one ml. So that equals five per one ml. So if there is one thousand 
ML, remember from 10 to the third, ML is equal to 1,000 ML, right? So 5 paramecia times 1,000 um, mil, paramecium per mil, keep track of our unit, gives us 5,000 paramecia. So two ways to get there um, to sort out how many paramecium in 1,000 mL if there are 120 mL. Okay, let's go on and here we have a second problem. But before I proceed to this second problem, let me correct uh, an error I made when I started that these are actually from chapter 14 of Seidman instead of, I originally said 13. So this is actually, this problem, uh, this example problem comes from page 230. And it's actually two problems, first part and then B part here. So we're going to look at the first part first. And the problem states, a transgenic animal is one that produces a protein or trait from another species as a result of incorporating a foreign gene into its genome. In 1993, transgenic sheep were born that secrete a human protein, AAT, into their milk. AAT is, a, is valuable in the treatment of emphysema. A sheep can produce 400 liters of milk each year. If a transgenic sheep secretes 15 grams of AAT in each liter of milk she produces, how many grams of AAT can this sheep produce in a year? Once again, we can look at this well, from two strategies. And um, the first way is um, looking at if there are 15 grams per liter, right? times 400 liters, that's how many she makes in a year, right? So that would be 400, the liters will cancel out, so it's 400 times 15 grams, or 6,000 grams. Now, the other way we can do it is just in the proportions that we've looked at. So we say 15 grams per one liter, right, is equal to how many in 400 liters. And we cross multiply, so we get 15 grams times 400 liters is equal to one liter, right, times uh, unknown grams, and then once again we put 15 grams times 400 liters over the one liter is equal to our question mark, and so liters are going to cancel out and basically it's one divided into 15 grams times 400 is what the same answer, 6,000 grams. All right, so this is 6,000 grams per sheet per year. All right, so we go back to the second part of that. If AAT is worth $110 per gram, what is the value of a year's production of AAT? All right, so if it's right, $110 per gram, and the year's supply is 6,000 
grams, right? Then once again, there's there's two strategies, right? When you say $110 per gram times the 6,000 grams is going to give us $660,000, right, in a year. Remember, the grams are going to cancel out, so we wind up with $660,000. Sorry about that. Um, and the other way is our, once again, our proportional cross multiplication method. So we have our $110 per one gram right, is equal to how many dollars for our 6,000 grams. So once again, we can cross multiply, right? So we get 110 110 dollars times 6,000 grams is equal to 1 gram times some number of dollars. Um, Okay, let me I'll erase that. Let me rewrite that. One hundred and ten dollars, right? Times six thousand grams is equal to one gram. Question mark. So, okay, then then we're going to. Divide each side by one gram. So I have $110 times 6,000 grams by one gram equal to some question mark. So that once again boils down to the same $110 times 6,000 is equal to 6. Hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So both these questions, right, have been dealing with proportions, um, and um, like I say most of these um, uh, have, you know, the two strategies depending on how you want to look at them. Um, I've got a couple kind of little problems here um, that I'll just call common. I mean, these are not biotechnology problems um, per se um, related to proportions, but um, uh, sometimes students get, you know, when we start talking about transgenic animals and grams and liters, um, they get thrown off by the units um, and um, you know, it lets them obscure the, the process. So let me do a couple problems here in kind of your more common everyday lingo, um, and, and maybe you'll feel better that, oh, well, I already know how this works. Let's say your car gets 30 miles per gallon, right? And um, you need to go to the gas station and get some gas because you're going to go to the beach and that is 200 miles away. Okay. 
And so your question is, how much gas, how many gallons, are you going to buy? Right? So if you get 30 miles for one gallon, right? How much gas is it going to take for 200 miles? Right? So once again, we cross multiply. So one gallon times 200 miles is equal to so many gallons times 30 miles. Right? So we're going to divide both sides by 30 miles. for the question mark and so the miles are going to cancel out so we get 200 times 1 or 200 right, pounds divided by 30 right, which is going to equal 6 point six seven gallons. So you have to go to the gas station and get about seven gallons of gas. Now kind of carrying on that logic, let's say that gas costs you three dollars and forty five cents per gallon. And I'm not going to throw the point .9. I'm just going to say it's three dollars and forty-five uh, cents per gallon. And let's say your vehicle has a twenty-gallon capacity or twenty-gallon tank. And say you're dead empty. How much is it going to cost you to go buy that twenty gallons of gas? So, I mean, you've done this in your head without doing proportions. You just say that's $3.45 per gallon times 20 gallons is $69. Now, you can set it up as a proportion and say $3.45 per one gallon is equal to some amount for 20 gallons, right? Cross multiply, right? So you get 3.45 times 20 is one gallon times your question mark, so that's 3.4. 5 times 20 gallons divided by 1 gallon is equal to your question mark. The gallon unit is going to cancel out, so you get 3.45 dollars times 20 right, is equal to 69 dollars. So, you do proportions anytime you think about what you're buying at the uh, service station. Um, it's just in the biotechnology lab, we have um, milligrams per liter and uh, those type of things. So the units are a little bit foreign, but the math really um, isn't that foreign. So when you you know when you're doing one of these problems. Um, you know, see what the problem gives you, what values you're given, like the 345 a gallon and 20 gallons, and then sort out what the problem is asking you for and uh, how you need to solve it. So the best way of getting comfortable with these, as I, uh, I said before, is just working through the problem. So I would work through as many of the sample problems 
um, in this section of the chapter as you can. The text in, in the back of the text uh, uh, gives you the answer. Um, but work the problem, see if you got them right. Don't work backward from the answer and think that you understand the process when you see how they got the answer. Make sure you feel comfortable about going through the process and um, getting that answer.